There we go. This is uh, Megan Cole behind the camera reporting for <laughs> Capital Magazine. Hi, I'm here. <laughs> and uh, sitting here today, we're going to bring you a little chat with uh, Nilesh Patel, who is the producer and director and writer and uh, many other things, too. <laughs> um, the Renaissance man for Rocket 99, Rock in the Country, the film. Um, can you, Hess, just wave hi. Yeah. Can you tell us? Uh, what, first of all, tell us what Rocket 99, Rock in the Country, um, where it started, what it is, and um, what it's become, and, and um, just bring us through the history of creating the film. Sure. Uh, well, Rocket 99, Rock in the Country uh, is a documentary film, a feature documentary uh, that is essentially a dialogue around uh, racism in Canada when it comes to the relationship between Aboriginals and non Aboriginals in Canada. Wait for the truck. <laughs> and the uh, impetus for creating this film is that it's actually based on a tape called Rocket 99 that was made in southern Alberta in the mid 80s. And it was an hour and a half morning radio show that parodied what it would sound like if Aboriginals from the town, actual town of Rocket, if they'd had their own radio station. It was made by a bunch of uh, non-Aboriginals in Lethbridge, and it was a parody, a, a racist parody, mm -hmm. playing up all the stereotypes of Aboriginals as drunks and alcohol abusers, uh, physical abusers, violence against women, pretty much uh, every sort of atrocious stereotype you can imagine all in, in about an hour and a half. And eventually that tape was, you know, it was apparently... One tape, was it one One morning? tape, an hour and a half. One tape? It was like an actual morning radio show that you listen to in your car, like, you listen to CBC's morning radio show. It's an hour and a half radio show. That's sure. how radio shows are. And so this was a parody of what... This was one morning these one guys morning. got up and decided to... This well, was going to be on their program for the day? Or? Well, they never... It was actually just a tape. So it was like a bootleg. So something like the Jerky mm -hmm. Boys that you'd circulate. So they started... Right. Uh, eventually Friends dubbed it. To, you know, this is back when there was tape. So they sure. dub it, dub it, dub it. And eventually it went all across Canada and to a lot of parts of the states where there are Aboriginals. So... Uh, or First Nations, and mm -hmm. where the relationship uh, exists, and therefore the jokes or the stereotypes are more predominant. Mm -hmm. You generally don't find it as well known in the larger urban centers in Canada, which, in my opinion, are really are just Vancouver, Toronto, and Montreal. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, yeah. No, go ahead. Yeah. So we we started we shot the film in 2004 in the summer of 2004, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, uh, took a break from it for a while, and then... What did you do? Did you travel through the prairies? And yeah. And different cities and towns? Yeah, mainly we were in Alberta. Mm -hmm. Like, that's where the tape the was made, and that's where Brock is, and the tape was made in Lethbridge. But we were also in Saskatchewan, and then we were also in British Columbia. But eventually the film as it exists now really just starts in British Columbia, and then enters Alberta and finishes within the Pecani Nation, where Brock is actually located. The town of Brock Yeah, the town What's the population there now? Uh, I think the population is about 3,000. Is it predominantly First Nations? Yeah, okay. it's, it's a reserve. So okay. it's, um, yes, yeah, it's okay. completely First Nations. Pretty controversial, hey? The, the, well, the entire, I mean, filming it, how, what kind of run-ins did you have while you were trying to gather a footage and interviews and um, talking to people? Was it fairly easy? Were people fairly open to be speaking on camera about it? Or did you run into some... Well, yeah, no, there's... There's, there's a lot of people who would be afraid to talk about it. I think a lot of people don't feel that we can talk about it, and that has to do with essentially the reasons why we created the film, was that we felt there wasn't really, a, or at least I felt, there wasn't really a platform to actually talk about racism amongst average Canadian people versus the policies that have been created to create conversation that exists essentially within a liberal elite conversation mm -hmm. that's been spread out since the multiculturalism moves of the early 70s. Those are great policies but essentially the racism that uh, Aboriginals are living with, they are still living with now while the policies sort of always put everything into the past tense. Mm -hmm. So, yes, there are a lot of people that wanted to talk about it, and so that made it a lot, a lot easier. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of people who have a lot of fear of still talking about this. And southern Alberta is definitely an area where these things really uh, are yeah. more obvious. They exist. Yeah. yeah still. It's, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, they exist all over Canada, southern Alberta is just more in your face about a lot of mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and so you left it up to 2004 after gathering a lot of footage and interviews, and, and then you came back to it and threw it together. And, and it's when did it? When did you finish making the film, like officially? We officially released like the final version of the film would have been. Well, it would have been September 2006, but we actually played in a festival uh, in June 2006, which we won the best documentary at the First Peoples Festival in Montreal, which was quite an honor and a very huge critical step for us to be awarded within yeah. a First Nations festival, uh, their prize for best documentary. Mm -hmm. um, the final music wasn't in the film yet, so I guess that is the release, but September 2006 was when the final animations and music were put in and since then it's played in many many festivals across Canada and, uh, and feedback I mean you won an award that says a lot about yeah. the, the actual documentary but the feedback on the content have you had yeah the feedback is you know there's we always felt that if if the really hardcore fans of Brock and 99 uh, we're upset with the film, we are probably getting close to the truth of, of the conversation about racism. We also felt that if there was an Aboriginal section that was angry at the film as well, we were probably getting the mm -hmm. truth because there are groups that refuse to have a conversation that can lead to a peaceful understanding. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately for us that meant that we had to find the truth and that truth would anger groups that have really staked out strong positions. We are trying to find a way to be able to bring this into some meaningful conversation that mm -hmm. could engage uh, a younger generation, my generation, and, and, and even obviously the even younger generation to engage in this conversation so that mm -hmm. hopefully that racism can be seen as something that the average Canadian can talk about because as every group who, every, minor, every minority group can talk about racism, yeah. but essentially nothing will ever change if the majority never talks about racism. Mm -hmm. And that's the reality of it. Ideal. That would be ideal. It would be ideal. But that's, you know, people are looking to talk about more things always. Yeah. Always. Um, where, where does it stand right now? Are you still, uh, is it still being shown to, is it, is, you mentioned it was going to be uh, in Toronto? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we just got back from Victoria. I had another great screen there. And, um, then uh, what we're looking forward to now is, uh, well, I'm going to go do another series of screenings in Alberta uh, for the fa their Faculty of Medicine and their Aboriginal Healing Program. And then we're heading to Toronto, to real world, in mid-April. And mm -hmm. that will be our pretty much our last large city in Canada mm -hmm. that we haven't screened cool. in. And so back to sec to the uh, Alberta University, they're going to screen it there. What is there? Are they going to are they going to use your project in your film to educate? Yeah, well, yeah, no, it's great. Is uh, it's uh, the one of the largest responses to the film has been by educators and seeing the value of the film being able to expose people to ideas through a creative means, mm. i.e., that will engage a crowd that probably would never sit through any topic to do with social issues or especially to do with Aboriginals, which mm -hmm. most Canadians feel that we're not supposed to talk about anyways yeah. because the government talks about that for us. So they they actually it's a U of C's faculty of medicine and they've incorporated into the curriculum one of the big parts of curriculums in in medical schools in, in Canada now is uh, addressing doctors and helping them understand Aboriginals their history their community and the issues and challenges they face today mm -hmm. and so they're gonna use they they are using the film as part of their curriculum to have this dialogue. Mm -hmm. And so for us, that's really reaching the ultimate goals of the film, which is to eventually have this. Um, other universities are also using it now in different programs, is to have it being used mm -hmm. as a platform to be able to expose people to these ideas, and especially in a younger generation that d just doesn't engage because of all these formal mm -hmm. associations of how they're supposed to engage. Yeah. It's amazing that that still exists, actually. Yeah, well, we're just taught that if you want to engage in this, you need to study this and do that, and then you're validated and mm -hmm. being able to engage in it, when essentially, for me, I always looked at it as that we, we all have to be able to have the ability to engage whether or not we've, we're, we're professors or, or a, you know, students of that area. Mm -hmm. We have to be able to open up these topics so they are more relaxed and there's more availability to dialogue for even those who are ignorant.
because if you're not going to have those who don't know anything be able to engage in the dialogue, then it's just a bunch of people reaffirming themselves in a small group, mm -hmm. and the people that really could use this information are never given a chance to partake yeah. in this conversation. Cool. Right. Um, we're uh, we're we're going to have this uh, interview up on Capital Magazine. Um, but where can we find information, more information about Brocket 99, Brocket the Country, online? Online, you can go to Brocket 99, the movie dot com. So that's Brocket's. Rocket with a B and two T's, the movie.com. Uh, as well as just doing a, a Google search for Rocket 99, Rock in the Country, and there's a lot of reviews out there cool. now. And, and when are you in Toronto? What's the date? Uh, well, the festival is April 11th to 15th. Uh, the festival hasn't released a screening date yet, okay. um, but we'll be there we'll during be there. those cool. dates, and awesome. hopefully uh, some of you can make it out. Yeah, and thanks, Nalash. Nalash is not feeling good.